Hi there, welcome back to our channel. Um, today we're doing a little bit of a QA, and a aren't we? So we asked uh, or had some questions um, some time ago on Instagram. We, we put out uh, um, if anyone had any questions for us basically about, about anything. Well quite often as well, like especially like on Instagram, you're the one that does Instagram. Yep. Um, you get sort of lots and lots of questions and you just never always get around to talking to people properly about it and often they're the same questions. Yeah. So we thought by doing this you're actually kind of like answering everyone's questions hopefully, but in a bit more detail than just on a quick Yeah, on a quick message. quick message. And also there are some questions that people have asked previously that we've never actually covered on video, so we'll probably just answer mm. those as okay. well now. Well, you're in charge of the questions, I don't know what's coming. So, um, I've just written some of them down in regard to the ones that we had here, so... And I can't read your writing. So, so. here we go. <laughs> So, I have no idea. Right, first one is from the Crochet Ninja. I've got most of the names of these. Some of the ones we've, we've been asked either on YouTube or just generally Instagram. I may not know or remember the names. So apologies if I don't give out the name for everything, but I will do when we can. So yeah, Crochet, Crochet Ninja asked about best park shoes. Did you want to go to what you find your best park shoes? I have got these Zara kids park shoes. I wear kids shoes. I'm only a one and a half so I don't have adult shoes. Um, they are so comfy. They're just little pumps with little zips and they are super super comfy but I'm not a great one. I used to just wear flip-flops for years and years didn't I? Yeah. Um, but no. You're always a you were always a flip-flop person. Ever since I met you you were always flip-flops. I get a lot of um, blisters. Mm. I think again because I ha wear kids shoes they have Kids shoes are really supportive, but they have solid backs. There's no give in them, yep. and they come up high. So I've always had blisters. So it's always been um, flip flops for me. So I don't get blisters. But nowadays, those Zara shoes, I picked up a pair. Then I picked two more in the sale. I bought them for you. Bought them for my birthday. Yeah, I'd bought them previously. Oh, had you? The one pair. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 then you bought two more. That's it, yeah. Um, so I've just worn one out. One's stuck together with the glue <laughs> gun that I've been wearing in Disneyland Paris, and then I've got new ones. For Walt Disney World, I'd be devastated when they die. Mm. What do you wear? Well, mine, um, I opt for a, I'm a big fan in this country of my Merrill shoes, which really are proper, ugly, though, wa they're proper they? walking shoes. My ones are, and I don't wear these in Disney because they'd be too heavy. Well, they're, they're not too bad. They're warm, I would but think. But yeah, they are ventilated, they're Gore-Tex, so they're waterproof. I love Merrill shoes. That's what I walk in all the time. Um, I've actually got a couple of pairs of Merrill sandals. And what I like about them, you don't like them, do you? You call them ugly shoes, don't you? Uh, the sandals are great because how many people have been into a theme park uh, and it's really warm, it's great because your feet obviously aren't covered in trainers. Covered, covered, in, in, trainers. covered in trainers. <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't got trainers on. I find my feet get so warm, uh, especially in the Florida heat. Mm. So wearing the Merrill sandals, it's great on a few things because they're nice and cool, but also when you go on, to, on the water rides, they dry off really quickly. So if they get soaking wet, it's not a problem. And also with the rain out there and the thunderstorms, again, you get caught in the rain, it's not a problem. So I take a couple of, pair of the, pairs of those and I've got some reef uh, flip-flops um, and a couple of pairs of Oakley flip-flops as well. A lot of people swear by um, sketches, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, for me it's, it, it, it's Merrill all the way and flip-flops, Reef and uh, Oakley. Something I do love though, if I've got flip-flops on or a pair of sandals when it's really hot and you sit down to have a drink oh, and you and take nice, off your shoes yeah, and it's nice and cold, I like that feeling. But we're, yeah, I'm not a great one to ask about shoes because I don't wear the same, was it my sister? What? Birkenstocks, my sister and our daughter Holly wear and they say they are so, so comfortable, don't they? Yeah, and Ben wears the flip flops. Which one? Haviana. Is, Javi, is it Haviana? I mm. think they're called. He swears by those. I think yeah. he lives in them, doesn't he? He but, does, even in the winter. So that, that's that's what we wear in Florida. For me, that's great because even if it gets soaking wet, you can just dry them really easily as well. And we've just bought Louis actually a new pair of. Was it Nike we've bought? Here? Yeah, just the real lightweight kind of trainers. Yeah, they're almost like mesh. We've bought them before for trips as well, so they dry quickly if they get wet. Um, but yeah, really lightweight, so hopefully not too hot. They're not like your typical head heavy sort of men's trainers. There is something I'd like to try actually, I've seen that's been released um, very quickly, if I can just have about 10 seconds to say this, there's a company called Tropic Feel that have actually released waterproof, not waterproof shoes, but shoes you can wear in water. Mm. And the idea behind them is you can wear them, I think they're more, the ideal and universal. more <laughs> if you wear sort of like, uh, do water sports or things like that, but they're, they're the 
idea behind them is they dry quickly as well and they look really comfortable. They're that kind of lightweight trainer kind of look. So I'm mm. going to hopefully maybe try and get a pair of those at some point, but not okay. before our next trip. No. Okay, moving on. Um, this is a question from Georgia. Um, so uh, Gigi Peachy is an Instagram account. What pulls you back to Disney? Like what makes you um, keep coming back or want to keep coming back? It was the kids to start with, wasn't it? The nostalgia, the happy memories that we've made. It, for us there, it's our kids, oh, it's made me go goosebumpy thinking it? about it, yeah. It just, and that's why I think I get quite emotional out there, because it's like, oh my gosh, remember when, you know, like around Nemo, Nemo just starts me off every time. It's, it's the family memories that we've mm. made. And now I just feel so relaxed. I like the excitement the build-up of going the planning it's just everything and it's also because like going to the states we love all the food we love the restaurants the shopping going you know even going supermarket shopping it's just it's just it fits it sort of ticks all our boxes really doesn't yeah, it yeah it's kind of you can do as much or as little as you like really and i think sometimes mm. especially now the more recent trips our trips have always kind of they've been similar but they've been different Every in the same way. So there's feel. always different feel. And I think when we then stayed on site for the first time, that was a different trip. Mm. Then when we've been off site um, and we've done dining plan. Um, and then but, throwing in the road trips as well. Yeah, as the and the road trips older. as well. But obviously mm. it's road trips. We've often actually ended like a week in Disney or something mm. like that. Um, it's just been a mix of things. It's been a mix it? of things. I think it's just the fact of, yeah, the relaxation. And the escape. I think that's what I love about Disney. I just love the escape. You can be who you want to be. Nobody cares. Nobody gives you a second look if you want to dance along to parade music. You can just be who you want to be and you don't feel judged. And I think it was also, wasn't it Walt's idea, the fact that it was when he took his kids out to the park, this was before Disney, mm. um, that he thought of the idea of a place that not just the kids could enjoy, but sort of adults families mm, so they yeah. can all go there and I feel that's part of it because obviously now having just done our first trip with without the children with friends we enjoyed that just as much as with the kids of when, of, of when they were when they were tiny so yeah, I was gonna say that actually you think I mean the first trip I did to Disney the kids were babies and now we're still enjoying it and they're adults and then we're enjoying it with friends. We're going with my mum in October, who's in her 60s. It, it, there is something for everyone. I think also now it's the friends that you we've met through it as well. Mm, that's yeah. the other thing as well. Do you know that's well. the other thing, actually, the friendships we've made? There does seem to be something that is, is it just like nice. It feels like a community, And also it? people that get it as well. Mm. Um, a lot of people do say, people that haven't done Disney, and say, well, why do you keep going back? Or even the States in general. Mm. And I just feel there's there's just lots of reasons. I yeah, think. everyone's different at the end. I think end when of you the get day. it, you get it, don't you? So. Mm. Um, okay. Georgia, why do you like it? Let us know. Mm. <laughs> okay, so next uh, question here is from Richard from RH Tube. Um, it's uh, he asked uh, maybe if we could do a video how we launch the channel, uh, editing videos, monetization, etc. And maybe we actually loop this in with, there's a question from Zoe, I think it's crafting with Zoe. Um, and favourite thing about vlogging, why did we want to start? Okay. So, in regards to launching the channel, um, I guess, I mean, do you want to pass over? I mean, I think we wanted to kind of... Yeah, I was going to say, because, I mean, the I'm a scrapbooker. I've been scrapbooking and documenting our lives for nearly 20 years. And so I've always, always documented everything that we've done. So the, the, we've got great big scrapbooks up there where I've documented our previous trips. And then 2012, I joined the Dib. This was obviously before really videos. Yeah, and exactly. Even I was going to say, well, then the Dib, we would share trip reports. So you'd make a journal, keep a journal whilst you're on holiday, photograph everything, come home and literally write out. It's like doing a video, a journal version of a it's video. It's like a blog, really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And you would share your trip reports on the Dib. And I started doing that in 2012. And I used to read other people's trip reports before bed every single night. And I loved them. And that's where I've made a lot of friends mm. through there as well and so then I started my business YouTube channel 
but I didn't really vlog it was just more sort of like actual more for my work wasn't it mm. and then we had a trip coming up in 2017 and I decided to vlog that I just thought it was um then almost the next stage of going on from the trip yeah. reports and we were talking about this before and like you were saying about it's nice to help people yeah I think before we went and I think as YouTube started to get so much well I say more popular and there's a lot more information out there we would watch vlogs before going that only started in 2017 yeah but it was mm. uh, i think one of our first was adam the woo that we watched and then tim tracker and justin scar adam hatton and adam hatton um and i feel that there were so many things we learned from that um and we're still learning now but i think uh, to answer zoe's point about why did we start I think it was more we felt that there were so many different things we had kind of picked up we just wanted to kind of share those and still now I think so, also as well for me it was the memory keeping when we we when we first started vlogging it was more just recording what we were doing and like now we love going back and watching our trips and watching like the children and things like that so that's really nice and although there's been times when the kids you know as they you know what teenagers are like they haven't always wanted the camera on which is fair yeah. enough they love the vlogs and yeah, they, watch, they them watch them back. They watch them back with their friends and now Louis starts talking about vlogging. So I've never had any regrets. My only regret is that we didn't start doing it sooner. We'd talked about doing it the year before. Yeah, and, yeah, but we didn't. And I didn't and I really regret that now. So glad we've actually got it. I mean, you've always had a camera. We've all, or both mm. of us have always had a camera. We've taken probably thousands of photos in every trip. And I think it's just been a natural progression of your yeah. memory keeping. Onto. And then helping other people as well, yeah. sharing tips and ideas, which is where it came from. The dib, like I said, from 2012, it is just swapping stories and you learn from each other that way as well and help each other. And also helping others as well that have, uh, have got the, the, would like to start a YouTube channel. I know that um, Beth, who watches our channel, she wanted to start and was mm. asking advice. And she started a channel and I think she's going to be vlogging upcoming trips and also Georgia as well she she's recently she sort started. of recently started as well and I think it's trying to share that information as well just so go for it though what if, do you're, we use? if you're interested go for it like I said I really regret having not vlogged our road trip in 2016 the year before we yeah. started vlogging I really even if I'd just done a mishmash of videos and kind of piece them together just do it for you that's what I would say and I I think it's, this is always the best bit of advice that I've shared with others that we've had not personally but in someone's vlog it was an Adam the Woo said about just get used to being in front of the camera and do you think you ever are used to it I, I still don't, feel self-conscious but it's the fact if you feel you can walk down a, a street in public with a camera no. facing towards your face no. or facing the other way and talking <laughs> no. when you're on your own I mean most of the time we're together but that when helps. that helps but when you're on your own that feeling of doing that and that sometimes just takes time and also you find your way do what feels right for you um, everyone is different I think that's what makes things so great is because mm -hmm. you just bring that your personal touch to it. You don't have to be like someone else. If you like doing something, you do that. I mean, I look at that. You you look at the three vloggers I've just mentioned there. Adam the Woo, Tim Tracker, and Justin Scard. Three completely different styles of vlogs. Yeah, that's true. We love them all, but I'd say we watch them because we now like them. Like them. And it's kind of almost their personality comes through. So if you're doing it, you just be yourself and mm. enjoy it. There's one here about advice about halloween event should i book is it worth it and i think this is from love joe handmade is that disney or universal i was just gonna say i'm not sure let's cover both let's do universal well, we haven't been to universal that's what i was about to say we've not done universal so we don't know we'd want to we were due to weren't we but we've decided not to but we decided not to decided to save the money instead <laughs> should we change the factory? yeah and in regards to, uh, I think it's Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, is obviously the Disney uh, Halloween event. Now we've done that, we spoke about this, didn't we? We've done it all. I think three, three times. Three times. Uh, first time was 2012. And just to put that in comparison of what the prices are now, we paid for four of us the same price that it is for about one of you now. £42 each we paid the so, first time. I had a look in my planner the other day. So I think um, I think the prices have gone up 
Well, they've definitely gone up. They're crazy But I prices, think October though. time, I think one person is $199 each. If you go around Halloween. If you go around Halloween. Yeah. I think before, is it 160 It, it varies. It staggers the whole time. But... I can't justify that. What I was going to say when we did it, we are so glad we did it. It was great fun. And I would say, even now, if you haven't done it, it is a great night. I know it's they've, fun. They, Think they, of it as a party. It feels like a party in the park. I mean, trick-or-treating's fun if you like the candy. Um, I think the candy's all a bit naff, to be honest, and I don't eat it anyway. And you don't like it. I, I like it. You but could go to Walmart and buy a bag for $5. I know, and that's the thing. I know people come back and they, the people have even weighed their bags. Mm. Oh, I've got this much. I've got a kilo. I've got two kilos. How much of it have we thrown away when we've come home? Yeah. Uh, kids I mean, didn't eat it. They don't eat anything with nuts in, and most of it they didn't like either. Um, I mean, it's it's your typical branded stuff, isn't it? It's yeah. not like it's sort but of... we don't like a lot of American candy. Well, I, I liked it. Did you? Yeah, but there's just so much of it. Um, um, but also, I think like it's really seeing the characters in costume is really cute. But the queues are massive. It's great to get on rides. Yes, to get on <laughs> rides. I think the amount of times we've done Space Mountain. I love the parade. I love Halloween. It's amazing. I love the atmosphere, seeing everyone dressing up. It does feel really, really fun. It is a good, fun evening, isn't it? Yeah, and as Lisa said as well, if you want to get on some of the rides, it's a great one to be able to go on. I think we did, yeah, Space Mountain in three mm. times with our bag of candy. Yeah. <laughs> Louis, dre Louis dressed up with his as a vampire. vampire and things like that. So it is a great thing. I think if you've not done it, it's worth doing. And I think we feel the same about the Halloween Horror Nights. Mm. We've not done it, but it's something we want to do. Um, whereas I feel maybe if people have done that before, would they, or many times, would they do that again? So no, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a great night, so. I'd be interested to hear other people's comments. If you want to leave a comment below, let us know how you if, feel about it. If you've been, do you love it? Would you go each trip? But if you think, if you've got a family of four, that's going October time, that's close to $800. It's a lot of money. That's just to get in, isn't mm, it? It is a lot so, of money. So, yeah. That I just wonder what people's thoughts are as well on that. Mm. Those have gone, those have gone before and done it several times. Do you still do it? A uh, uh, question here from uh, Charlotte Rosen. Uh, other than Disney, what's our favourite holiday destination? It's road trips for me. I just like stopping and spontaneous trips and like just driving and then you see a sign, you think, oh, let's stop there. I love road trips. So it doesn't. I don't think it matters where I am. I just love exploring. Yeah, and I'd say in regard to that, the road trips, and we uh, reason we say the road trips, I mean, some of our favourite destinations we've been to, Chattanooga we loved, mm. Savannah we loved. Oh, Savannah is my most favourite um, place I've ever been to. And these are obviously all places in the US. Um, there's just things about them. When we did that road trip, we drove into Alabama and we went to the cutest cafe, the mm. Wild, Wild, Wild Flower Cafe. You had found it online, mm. um, and it was lovely. It looked a bit like a shack from the outside, it's but it was cute. so lovely. The food was nice. The dessert, my Derby pie, was so lovely. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily. It's not like down the main sort of. What do you call it? Main Street. Yeah, it's places there. So although and Sonoy you, in Georgia. Sonoy in in Georgia was absolutely lovely. Now, yeah. if you know, we are big. Walking Dead fans. Now, Sonoy is where they actually filmed um, quite a lot of Walking Dead. Um, it's so just this tiny little town it is in the middle so, of nowhere. It's such a lovely but I love place. Virginia. I love Georgia, Tennessee. I love all that area. Um, and the and West I'd like Coast. To see a lot more. Yeah, but then also it's things like the the drive we did from New York to Washington. Mm. Um, I would still choose like Virginia. Tennessee area. Definitely, the, the mountains I think yeah. are just so nice. Where we stayed in, in um I'm more of a mountain person than I am a beach person. Yeah, yeah, but definitely it's a slower pace. Mm, I um, love greenery. So a great road trip, but a road trip in the way that you can stop off and enjoy the places you're actually going to. So yeah, we might do a stay overnight, but that's more the fact so we can get up and go on to our next destination. Yeah. So yeah. This actually brings on almost in some ways another question. Top tips for California road trip. This Aww. is from Jinx77. Um, we did our road trip in 2019. We are so... I'll leave a link below, by the way, if you haven't seen it. It's on my other channel. Yeah, we did that 2019. We started in San Francisco, drove down uh, Monterey, 
what's next after Monterey? Uh, Hollywood. Hollywood, and then on to Anaheim. And then we flew to Orlando. And we did, also there. did Palm Springs and the Joshua Tree yes. as well. Now, tips. I would, oh, again, research. research. Personal preference, we started in San Francisco. I think I would always do that again. The reason why the other way up. we did it that way, I'd done the trip before and we drove up, but you're driving on the other side of the road. So if you're driving down from San Francisco downwards, you're actually driving on the coastal side, so you've got the view. Whereas if you're driving on the other side, you've got a car, and then if you're nervous of that kind of thing, then maybe you want to be on the inside. Yeah, it's the drive, if you, if you watch the vlogs, um, it's, it's quite a, hairy it's a gorgeous drive, but at some points it is quite, um, uh, it was quite a tense drive, should we say, you in don't place like in places. Like that, do you? Some people could be perfectly fine, but it's more the fact that there's sometimes not much room. It's not much so much you, but it's maybe someone coming the other way. So I there don't were. Think you breathed properly for that whole drive. No, did you? it was, was about two hundred miles. miles. <laughs> it was gorgeous, though, and we stopped off. Where was the place we stopped off in regard to the falls? McQuay Falls. McQuay Falls. I think research. Look at the route. We actually even, I think this is probably one of the biggest piece of advice, if you're going to do a road trip, get Google Maps out, you won't necessarily do it in one go, in one sitting. Do it so it's the actual satellite as well, so it's not just the map, it's the satellite. And, and close enough in so you can see places, so you can see things, Sorry. you can see things like maybe... Waterfalls. Uh, well, yeah, I was going to say the practical side as well, mm. like petrol stations, okay, yeah. places to maybe stop There's for food and drink, because there, there aren't many. No, so, there's no fast food, there's no chains or anything like that. For a long section of Long, it, so. long time. But yeah, so doing the map search and then we would go through, we've done this with all our road trips, haven't we? To look where one, well, places that are either food or drink, um, for gas or petrol, um, and also just nice places to stop at. I mean, although like we stopped overnight in Cambria. Cambria um it's looking for places like the mcway falls was on the way Monterey was on the way so we mm -hmm. went we did well watching so i think it's just research if there's particular things that you want to do um it's it's just look what's what's on that route the other thing as well when we've done this like with previous road trips like we did a trip from dc to indiana in april and we were going through some mountainous sort of areas and we were just a bit worried just in case the weather was colder because it was a bit of a sort of iffy time to go. It can still be so really quite cold. By using Google Maps you can look at the roads, you can see how wide they are and if you feel safe and that really helps as well. Look yeah. for areas if you need to, like there's lots of rest stops around there. Just put your mind at ease a little bit. I think bit. the biggest thing is research and also mm -hmm. giving yourself enough time um we kind of planned it we had was it three nights in san francisco mm. um and i know recently um um oh it was holly went with her mum i think to and did that san francisco mm. and did that kind of route and it looked great fun they actually flew from different places so they did san francisco they then i think flew to vegas okay. they then flew to uh, either la so there's if you're on a drive there's other options as well so mm. we drove we loved it um i think just research of what you want to do we actually stayed six nights in hollywood um and i wasn't actually necessarily gonna think that was that great. We I've, always swore we'd never go back to Hollywood. I've, didn't we? I've done it a couple of times before and literally driven through, stopped off. Well, You've done, yeah. and it was a case of yeah, not fast, not really fast. But we stayed there, and I think because we planned some things to do, there's the Grove shopping, which mm. was so nice. Was it places that pla we did. the hikes, but the, sh the, the food? Mm. There's so many things there. You do think of Hollywood being the tours, which we did do one, <laughs> um, but also you think of the, the, the Strip, don't you? Mm. Sunset Boulevard and Hollywood. Is it Hollywood Boulevard as well? Um, and the Walk of Fame. That's an area I would be very kind of... Our son wants to go into the movie industry though, so it was that part of the trip was for him, but we've digressed from the road trip. Yeah, exactly. Now, so That's why we went there. But and no, road it. trip <laughs> research and also give yourself the time that you think you want and need there. I would say as well, work out what you want to do and see, and then from there decide how long you need to be in a place as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So... Um, there's a question from Cliff here. Oh, I love Cliff. So Cliff and Roxy, did we get Poppy before or after we got married? Oh, it was after. It was after, it? yeah. I was trying to think, was it the year after? Or was it just shortly after? It was a 
couple of years. I think was Holly eight. I can't remember. Like that. It was either a year after. Yeah. If she's fourteen now, it might be in the year. Might. Have, what year does that take us to? Yeah, because we've been married fifteen years, so it was the year after then. Yeah. 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 It was a nice age with the kids, actually, wasn't it? Because they yeah. were old enough to go on longer walks with us and things. And that really changed things as well, having the dog as well, going mm. out on walks. Yeah, so. and we used to, um, we started doing like caravanning holidays down to the beach. Yeah. But like off season, like Easter and October, so that she could come with us. It was just so nice, wasn't it? Yep. Onto the beach and then sort of have the little caravan. And that was holiday. so nice, actually. Yeah. It was really nice. Oh. Um, Okay, there's one here. I'm not sure how we're actually going to necessarily answer Oppie's this. Oppie's our dog, by the way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else that doesn't not, know. Not a child. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, best way to book flights with points and companion voucher. This is from Christiane Benison. Um, I'd actually say, I'll just start this one off and maybe you carry on. We may not dwell on this too much. Uh, it might be something, oh, I don't know if we would. Well, well, we'll have a look. But I don't want to dwell on this too long because we could talk about this for a long time. I would say, at the moment, it is very difficult to get points and companion flights or points flights. They're kind of essentially the same thing. If you've got a points, yeah. if you've got a points flight, you can use a companion voucher. Which, if people don't know, with Virgin, if you have a companion voucher, it means it's essentially you pay for one, you get the other free. You still pay for tax. So you still pay for tax. You just don't use your points. You don't use your points, so you just pay essentially the points for one person. Um, we have been looking and the flights definitely from the from London area from Heathrow because they're flying from Heathrow at the moment are few and far between really should we say so we flights. are struggling to book flights with Virgin um, points now they don't and call them miles anymore and we're also really flexible with when we can go we can pretty much go any time we're and not tied to anything we're really struggling um, we've got um, even when we go with family in October we're coming back from Miami and all the family are coming back from Orlando the day after us. We cannot, we've been doing it since the flights came out. There's just nothing. Yeah, so I think to answer the question quickly, best way to book flights is to keep looking. Yeah. Sometimes something comes up. I mean, years ago, we used to see that the fact that they, the flights seemed to be released like five o'clock in the morning. There'd be six flights, yeah. And we used to, for years, we managed to be able to get our flights because we knew that was kind of the pattern. The they very morning they were released. Yeah, they seemed to stop that. And now it just seems to be luck if they've got them. And even when we speak to them, it's okay. So they don't know when there's going to be one, but they seem to be few and far between mm. now. And it is a struggle. Um, and even when we look, it, it can get frustrating as well. Because it's not like you see a calendar of when there's loads available. You've just got to keep checking it each day. Now, quick question for anyone out there. Does whoever knows both Virgin and BA, does mm. the Avios booking system for like the miles or points flights or the equivalent work in the same way? Because for Virgin, it has to be a points flight. With BA, is it the same? Does that have to be a points flight or ticket or a points Does there seat? have to be points availability? Or, or can you use seats, points? Yeah. Can you use points on any booking? If that makes sense. So if anyone's done BA, if yeah, if they could share that, that'd be great. Yeah, because we're wondering about if it's time to switch. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's one here from uh, Ashley. Oh. Uh, I always forget how to say. I always think it's Taylor. But is it, yeah, Taylor's old time. Yeah. Um, Favourite time of year to visit Florida? Now we've been in January, February, March, March July, July August, August, September, September October. October. <laughs> so there's two parts of this here. Mm. One is the weather. October was nice. And for quite for, for a couple of trips, we did October, and I remember sitting in the bar at Bahama Bay and speaking to the barman and him saying, October is always quiet. Always was quiet that in 2012? Florida. 2012. That was 2012. And I think had it's we changed. it was a different time. So we booked, I think, the following trip for October. Yeah, Sorry. We booked for October and it was, it was quiet. It was the half term we went and it was lovely. Mm. I think since then though. October's got a lot it's busier, but weather, weather was lovely because it's kind of gone past the stormy season. Yeah, it's not as hot, 
So October weather-wise... Not as is, rainy. Isn't... We've had two October trips with no rain. So October has, has been a lovely time to go mm. for weather and also when we went it was quieter but now... And like the July-August trips there's a lot of rain um, and it has impacted our trips. I know people always say it's 10 minutes. We've had days, what well, feels like days or like whole afternoons. It can change your, your yeah. plans, yeah. And I, I remember like one trip just saying I miss the blue skies. I think we had a really, really rainy few days. Yeah, that was August. I, I remember our August trip, or wasn't it? July, maybe. Um, the start of the year, we did our first trip was in March, and that was actually really nice. The mm, weather chilly was chilly in the evening. The weather we had was great, so that we? it was nice though because it almost you had a bit of like felt mm. like a bit of a respite from yeah, the heat. Yeah, that was quite nice. So March was great, but we did. But watch out for spring break though, because that yes. gets busy, and and Easter's heaving. Yeah. Exactly. I think there was one year when Easter was really either early or yeah. late and it kind of worked out perfect. Or anyway, so um, January we've, we've just done. It, we've it, done January and February and we've had frost both times and really, really cold. And I know both those times it was unusual weather. It I was think, typically you know, cold, but we've heard from others that it can be really cold that time I as well. Have. I'm looking, I would like to do a May trip because I've noticed now on the weather app it's starting to get rainy again. Um, and I have enjoyed like when we've done like the end of August, beginning of September. I know it's still rainy, but it's when we've done that previously, it's actually been quite quiet as well mm. because the American kids have gone back to school. That's that, been quite a nice time to go. When was that again? The last end part of August. Of, end of August. Yeah. Our first week of September. We've done that a couple of times. Yeah, that's that seems to be a really nice time mm. to go. Um, and also another thing as well. Yeah, that, the problem is hurricanes that time. Of year. Yeah, you it get into bit, that weather. Yeah kind of season of that don't you so it's a bit dodgy um we've got a couple more here to ask somebody asked is this your dlp question okay um do you need to book each park day not if you're staying on site with disney um and this is from dion rob by mm. the way so um if you're staying on disney no you don't need to book it if you are an annual pass holder and you're not staying on site you do need to book your park reservations in a, I guess, a similar way you do need, need well, do with Walt Disney World. Yeah. Um, when you are staying on site, you've got to show your room key as well when you go in. So if you've got an annual pass, you've also got to have your room key as well so they can see you are staying on site. Um, if What's the situation if you've got a day ticket? I'm guessing, do you book it for that day? I don't know because I know I was watching Mummy and Ford yeah. Do Disney and she was looking at this and it was because I think she's got an upcoming trip and if you buy a day ticket it's different again I can't I quite know, remember. We bought a day ticket before we got our annual passes but that was for that day so but that we was were staying on, But we were staying oh, on we site as well site, so that yeah, was fine. So, I'm not so sure. I don't know the situation if you've got a day ticket or normal ticket and i.e. what I mean normal ticket and non-annual pass and you're staying off site. So I don't know if the day we ticket We haven't means... actually stayed off site before, so no. we haven't had that when problem. When we booked our, our tickets that first trip, were yeah. they particularly for a particular day? We booked it all through Disney. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe... And when I did the singular ticket, because we knew we were going to upgrade out there, it was for that, it was a dated ticket. This is what I'm wondering. But we were staying on site. Yeah, so... But it was a dated ticket. So we, we can't help in regard to if you've got a, just a ticket and staying off site, but we do know, yet. Yeah, Annual pass staying on site, you don't need to. Um, annual pass if you're saying. But I would imagine, off -site. just imagine if you've bought, like, say, a four day pass, I'm guessing you need park reservations. Mm. Don't you? Just be aware and maybe ask the question. Sorry, but I can't answer mm. that. If anyone knows the answer to that, please, yeah, leave the question below. And also, this is actually current from the time we we're actually recording and the last time we went as well. So, which is the end of May. Again, please, please mm. just just check check on their site, call them up, email them, um, because things are are changing. It could be they they drop park reservations. Yeah, be nice. Um, is this the last one? We've got a, a couple more. Okay. Uh, would we ever do Japan and Hong Kong Disney? That's from Crafting Zoe. We'd like to. We would we? do. I think Japan would probably be the one I'd like to do first. That's the one that, that kind of appeals to me more. Um, not that Hong Kong doesn't, but I think Japan in general. I don't general... know much about Hong Kong. Actually. No, I don't know. Yeah. Japan in general the seems. The Tokyo one, though. We'd like to go to Japan anyway. Japan we? kind of intrigues. Well, I want to say intrigues. Somewhere I'd, we'd like to visit. Mm. So that's, I think, probably worse. So, yeah, we would do. We would do. Uh, Another question people have asked is about mobile phones in the US. 
Uh, now, some contracts have uh, you you can you can roam with them, but they will charge you a day, daily allowance. And normally, on most of them, it's five pound a day. So even if you do one message, um, you'll get charged that. Check with your provider, of course. Now the contract I've got with O2 were, is a, a kind of an older contract, and I've actually got global roaming included. So I don't pay anything additional. I didn't know that. No, so oh, mine's okay. all included. So you can use your phone for Google Maps. Yes, yeah, so I was telling you. Oh, that's what I was trying to explain. Oh, so I haven't, re I, I haven't renewed my contract because if I do, that will go away. Yeah, I'm with you now. So check your contract. Um, if you've got some of that, it really obviously does help. When we've done longer trips, we have actually bought SIM cards. We mm. bought SIM cards when, when we've been there. When we've done, when we've done like four week trips. And when we've done road trips as well. If we're yeah. kind of driving 12, 1300 miles across the country, we've wanted to know that if we need to use a phone, yeah. obviously if we've got signal, we can do. Um, also but, though, since then, Wi-Fi has improved. This is what I was going to say, Wi-Fi has mm. improved. Also with things like apps like WhatsApp. That's true, we didn't have put, WhatsApp back then. Put your phone think. on flight mode and just connect to Wi-Fi. There's a lot more Wi-Fi around, definitely around even the parks. I was always amazed, before you get on the ferry, and this is maybe the geek in me here, I uh, did a speed test before getting onto the ferry. Now for people a that are ago, more technical and things like that, or, or, or who are interested in this, um, you're kind of in the middle of nowhere. You're out in the open. I did a speed test and it at that point was far better than any of our internet connection speeds at home. And so there's a lot more Wi-Fi everywhere. So put your, keep your phone on on air, airplane mode so you've got no risk of having data on. Um, and then, um, yeah, use that. But check, check your phone. Uh, I do know Sky, Mo Sky Mobile actually, if you're with them, they charge you two pound a day. I believe. Again, check with your provider, but that's what we do. Um, so we have our phone, uh, my phone to use, because I know that I can just use that. But I generally turn my Wi-Fi on the whole time and use that generally. But I know I've got a phone I can use. Mm, that's handy to know. So, yeah. Is that it? Um, yeah, I think that kind of summarises The only other question was about favourite quick serves. Oh, OK. And universal restaurants. OK. Well, we did a quick serve video before I leave the we've link actually, below. Yeah, we've got a quick serve video yeah. um, so maybe we'll leave a link to that one. That was from the Crochet Ninja mm. um, and Top Universal Restaurants. I think we've we done a food one recently as well yes, where we spoke about we food. So we maybe... We, yeah, I, we, I think Universal for us, we just love the Simpsons land for food. Crusty Burger. You, yeah, you really like the burgers. Uh, the kids love the burgers and I love the chicken and mash. We're really easily pleased there. We all get really excited about eating there, don't we? Chocolate Emporium we love going to. We love Chocolate Emporium. Yeah, and I'm so excited about going to the bread box this time. Yes. I love a, love a toasted sandwich and it comes with fries as well. And yeah, check out the video for the quick serves as well mm. to see what our thoughts are. What would be your... I think Blaze Pizza is our favourite quick serve. Yeah, Blaze Be Pizza, definitely favourite quick serve. That mm. That is the... the, the, the yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll the top The one there. we're really, really looking forward to. Park-wise, I wouldn't know where I'd want to go. Mm. There's, I think resort-wise I would, but... Yeah, I guess so. Resort-wise, it would be Gasparilla's. Gasparilla's. Um, I, I keep thinking Roaring Fort, but not Roaring Geyser Fort. Geyser Point. Geyser Point, mm. Geyser Point at Lodge. Um, I like, love those. Um, where else is there? My tummy's rumbling. Is it? <laughs> I'm really hungry. Thinking of food, isn't it? <laughs> well, we've ca lunch? we've kind of rambled on for long, but thank you for your questions. Yeah, thank I you hope so that's, much. I hope that's kind of helped. And yeah, any other questions? Um, we do, do enjoy doing these. I so say, if there is any other questions that people have, please, yeah, just uh, just just ask us. Um, thank you for watching. Please, I hope if, we've answered everything okay. Yeah, please, if you don't subscribe, please hit that subscribe button and also notification bell so you'll see about our videos coming up. Thank you. Bye.